right, I think I might be like 10 seconds early, but I think we can start now. Hi, everybody, uh, and welcome to our third MLS Live. My name is Amanda Favre. My pronouns are she, her. I am the membership and bibliotemps manager for the Massachusetts Library System. And now I'm going to introduce Sarah. Morning, everybody. Um, my name is Sarah Sagigi, and I'm the executive director at the Mass Library System, she, her. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'd like to begin uh, today as we do all of our MLS lives with, uh, by sharing our land acknowledgement. And I invite you all to pause briefly uh, for reading and reflection. All right, hopefully we've all reflected. Um, today, Sarah will be facilitating the Q&A with our guests, um, and I'm going to be monitoring the chat for audience questions. So if you have a question, feel free to put it in the chat and we'll try to fit it in where we can. If we don't get to all the questions, then we will definitely respond to you personally afterwards. All right, now I'll give it back to Sarah. Awesome, thanks Amanda. All right. And thanks to all of you uh, for joining us this morning. I'm pleased to have our special guests, Betsy Meaden, our business and HR director, and Amanda Malakowski, our delivery and communications coordinator, join us today to talk about all things statewide delivery. Morning all. <laughs> Betsy and Mandy, together with our Optima partners, have managed the service for about five years now. Our delivery service is known uh, is well known internationally. Well, I'm sure it's internationally, but de definitely nationally, for its efficiency, connectivity, and astounding high use statistics. States bigger than ours see nine million items transported, and we regularly hit 14 million items a year. Other states charge libraries for a fee for the service. Through the incredible support of our advocates, we've been able to offer this service at no direct cost to the libraries, our libraries or our end users. Our statewide delivery service is a true example of coordinated resource sharing. And I'm very proud of the work we do with our network partners, Optima and you to keep this service moving. We've prepared a series of questions to guide the conversation, but please don't hesitate to put your questions in the chat box. Amanda will be monitoring those. If you have a question not related to today's topic, please go ahead and type it into the box as we go along. We'll try to save some time at the end for general questions. And if we can't provide you with an answer during the call, we will follow up with you personally. So again, thank you, Betsy and Mandy for joining us today to talk about statewide delivery. Um, I guess so the appropriate place to start, I guess, is what is MLS delivery? Mandy, oh. you want to break that one? <clears throat> oh, Mandy, you're muted. Oh, well, I'll, I'll start. Well, currently delivery is provided to 550 libraries of all types across the state of Massachusetts, support resource sharing, uh, resource sharing. MLS ships between 14 and 15 million items a year, annually by the means of our courier company, Optima Shipping. Uh, MLS and Optima, we work very closely together to provide this critical service. We meet all the time. If there are issues, um, you know, you, you uh, contact Mandy or uh, sometimes you, well, not sometimes, but, uh, you know, you can always contact me as well and I'll try to find an answer for you. Um, we do have good communication with Optima. We have biweekly meetings. Anything else you want to add, Mandy? Uh, I think you've pretty much touched upon everything. And I'm, cor I'm correct in assuming delivery isn't just books, right, Mandy? It's it's all types of materials, right? Yes. So magazines, uh, DVDs, CDs, um, books, all different types of um, materials. Yeah. And that's great. That That's another thing I think that makes a lot of our, our delivery service unique, that we... Um, ensure that multi-type, multi-formatted materials are being shifted all over. Um, and so to help with this process, technolo the technology that Optima uses to process delivery items, we call sort to light. And can you explain how that works? 
Sure. So Sort to Light is a semi-automated sorting technology that allows libraries to ship materials without requiring uh, a label to indicate where the item's destination is. So at the uh, warehouse, the sorters will scan the barcode on the front um, of the item with a uh, wrist-worn um, scanner. And then the scanner pulls the shared uh, ILS system and then indicates the destination for that item. So in each sorting rack, um, a light flashes up to indicate that the item should be placed in that particular bin. And then the sorter puts the item in the bin and then scans to clear that the item was in there. And then then um, the item gets sent to the correct library. And there also is a, a video on the a delivery guide under the sort to light tab and as well as on our Vimeo if you want to check out and see how the sort to light process works. Yeah, it is. It's really. Um, oh, thanks, Amanda. Uh, Amanda Favre for sharing the link in the chat. The video is it's really cool. It's it's to see it in action is, is kind of fascinating to see the the, uh, the sorters with their uh, little scanners on the on their hands and how they manipulate all the materials. It's, it's a really cool, fascinating process. Um, and usually you so, are able to see it when we have our open houses, yep. <laughs> which have been very successful in the last few years. But you know, due to the COVID, uh, we had to shut those down. But we're hoping in the future that these will get back up and running. And you can come in, you can look at how it's all done. You can even even participate in dry scanning. It's a uh, it's very unique. Very fancy. Um, are there any materials though that aren't um, that can't be processed using this technology? And and what happens to those kinds of materials? So materials that are not on sort to light would be hand sorted by the warehouse staff and require a, a root slip to indicate where the item is uh, destined to go. And the root slips are on our um, delivery guide as well. If you need to fill out a root slip for a library that's not on sort to light. And if by any chance an item is placed in delivery that's not on sort to light or didn't have a barcode on it, the mm -hmm. stores will know um, to return that item to the owning library or they'll send it to us to then locate the correct um, home for that item. That's great. So it sounds like a lot of, a lot of hands help with moving the materials yeah. um, around. And that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so if we can, Betsy, you had mentioned um, sort of some things that have changed, I guess, uh, because of the pandemic, one of them being our open houses that we usually host for members, uh, staff working at member libraries. But how else has the current pandemic affected delivery? Well, it certainly posed, it's posed many challenges for everyone, especially, you know, the delivery operations. Uh, resuming delivery after being shut down for a couple of months was an enormous, enormous task. It was certainly a lot easier to shut it down than it was to restart it. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to restart, we opened up the, all the libraries in phases, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, it was the easiest way that we could do it. Um, and I think it's worked out pretty well. Um, we coordinated with the libraries on delivery schedule. Mandy worked tirelessly trying to, you know, figure out when everybody was going to be open, able to accept delivery. And uh, there might have been a couple bumps in the road, but for the most part, I think I, I think it went uh, fairly smoothly. Um, so a lot of the conversations that we've had with our with our staff working at member libraries over the past years has sort of uh, talked about quarantining, the, qu the need to quarantine materials and um, that adverse effect that it's had on our statewide delivery system. <clears throat> can you explain some of the impacts quarantining is having and how members uh, participating in the service can help minimize these impacts? Well, quarantining the materials has certainly been challenging. Um, as members know, uh, the lack of bins has in circulation was and continues to be a problem. The warehouse has experienced shortages, making it difficult to complete the sort, daily sort, causing a delay in, in the materials getting to where they need to get. Um, we've been encouraging members to please, if they have any extra bins, to please call Mandy at delivery or call Optima for a pickup. And also to encourage you to empty those bins as soon as you can, put them in boxes on tables, whatever it is your process is for quarantining and get those bins back to us. Um, but that's been the most challenging thing for the quarantining. 
And certainly we appreciate all of you, um, our staff and member libraries that are working towards helping us keep our uh, delivery system running efficiently. Um, we, we know how much uh, your members, your patrons uh, rely on, on the service. So thank you Absolutely. also for working with us on that. Um, I'd like to pause in my questions. I think uh, there might be one from Amanda, uh, if, uh, from a member that Amanda Favre has. So Sarah, we have a couple questions oh, from um, people in the audience. Uh, so the first one is a fairly easy one to answer. Um, are there still libraries that have not returned to delivery? Uh, there, Mandy knows better than I, but there, there are a few. Yes, there are a few. And if you want to know who has returned, you can take a look on under the uh, roots information. I have a list of all the libraries that have resumed delivery. So you can confirm before you send anything out that that library is on delivery. Okay, and then the next one is, um, so this comes from a library to just give context. This comes from a library that um, only gets three stops a week and they're not part of a major network. But their major concern is lag time, um, and they're interested in knowing why, on average, some of their materials taking two weeks or sometimes three weeks for items to arrive at the library. Um, and it's been an ongoing problem with items coming from the Commonwealth catalog. So I was wondering if you can address that one. Well, again, it goes back to the time uh, quarantining. Some libraries are doing seven days, some are doing 10 days, which, you know, if, if one library has only one stop and somebody is quarantining for 10 days, I mean, it's going to take another week to get to you. So that, that's one of the major issues that we found out was the length of quarantining was, mm -hmm. was an issue. Because we're, the, the warehouses are going through the sort, there's nothing left in the warehouses every night. It's all gone. So once it leaves the warehouses, it's, it's up to the libraries to empty, empty all those bins and get them back out. Anything you want to add, Mandy? No, I think the, the thing that's really kind of causing the delay is, is the quarantining. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's what we're noticing. Um, depending on how long each library is, uh, has their set days for quarantining, kind of reflects on when the item will arrive to the next library. All right, I have a couple more questions. Um, do you have any statistics of the missed delivery by sort to light system or manual sorting? Within one week, a library got received two bins of misshipped materials. Did they report that to delivery? Uh, maybe. <laughs> so um, is it a mis missorts are, there can be two different kinds of missorts. You can have missorts where in your bin there's mixed items for other libraries, or you could have an entire bin um, for, what, for another library, but had a slip for your library. So usually when um, it's an entire bin for another library is the puller who pulled the bin, grabbed the wrong slip above and put it in. And that's how that missort occurred. Um, for uh, a mixed bin of missorts, it's the sorter had accidentally, because in the sorting pod, there are three um, rows and the bin, um, the bins are lined up on above, one above each other. And depending on um, with the, wherever the light, lights up on the bin, sometimes the, the uh, sorter puts it into the wrong bin. So if instances where you have any kind of missorts, you can always email me and I can help you with that and kind of clear up the issue. Right, and these are things that, you know, we really need to know if this is happening, you need to, to uh, let us know because uh, we do have quality assurance in our contract with Optima and we, and we need to know about all these missorts. So that would be greatly appreciated if you could let us know. Okay, I have another one and I think we hear this one a lot. So it would be good to talk about in the Q&A um, that libraries often have a problem with the driver saying that they don't have room to take empty containers. So the, the bins. Um, 
and they end up sitting there for a few days. So do you have any recommendations for how to address that? Yes, if the driver's unable to pick up your empty bins, please just email me at delivery at masslibsystem.org and then I can contact um, Optima and we can work to coordinate a pickup. So those uh, bins do get picked up. We understand sometimes the driver's not able to, but if you just email me, we'll work on getting those uh, bins picked up as soon as possible. Okay, and we have, we have a lot of questions. So <laughs> I'm gonna, so there is one um, follow up to the Miss Sort, and I think this is something else. So just to give everybody context that when I first started at MLS, I also worked in delivery in Mandy's job. Um, so this is, so I'm just to clarify. Um, so we have, so a library observed that the system failed to identify names of libraries. For example, West Roxbury Branch of Boston Public Library and Roxbury Community College Library. So I think what they're saying is that the Roxbury Community College Library received bins that were for the West Roxbury branch of the Boston Public Library, mm -hmm. if I'm understanding that correctly. And that could be that somebody grabbed the bin and put it in the wrong setup in the warehouse. And that's how it ended up. They're, they're close together. So if, if the driver's grabbing the bins, he could have grabbed the wrong one. But again, I mean, these are things that we need to know. Because then I, um, Mandy or I will contact Optima and talk about it on where they're situated next to each other. Do you, would either of you like to share some of the things that get discussed in the bi-weekly meetings with Optima and MLS? Sure, Mandy, go ahead. Sure, we usually discuss um, delivery routes, uh, kind of give an update on what's going on with the delivery routes, uh, the volume on the routes we talk about. Um, we also discuss, um, claims and issues that occur with missed sorts or um, if a library is going to be moving to a temporary location, um, what steps need to be taken in place to ensure that uh, while the library is undergoing some construction that materials get um, brought to the appropriate place as well as um, any kind of upcoming holiday information that needs to be shared and any cancellations or any delays on the, the routes and things like that. All right, do, oh, so where, here's a good question. Where do items go that don't have marks or slips? So those usually come to me if, um, they have no indication of where the owning library is. They'll come to the MLS office and then I go through them and I try to do my best to find, um, the owning library, or you may see sometimes on the delivery listserv, I'll send out an email indicating um, that an item arrived with no um, visible identification. If anybody kind of just put this in, or maybe somebody's if they just reach out to let me know. Yeah. And I mean, the second part of that question is there a lot of stuff being held and in context and comparison of what goes through delivery no, I would say maybe we get a few a few things a week. I, I would say it's a small number of things that end up in our office, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for the most part. And then for things that um, accidentally get sent that libraries aren't on delivery, we'll send them back to the owning library as well. So, um, so another question. Um, because many libraries are quarant quarantining items, um, and it's COVID related. Did we as an MLS get FEMA funds or other funding to buy more bins? No, we just recently purchased a thousand more bins for a total of, I put, was it 3,000, Mandy, that we purchased since last July. But you know, it's not solving the problem by putting more and more bins out into circulation. What we need is to have those bins coming back to us. But um, but to answer the question, no, we didn't. We used MLS funds to purchase them. Right. Um, and then, is there documentation about what types of errors occur statewide with Optima? 
I'm not really sure I understand what I think maybe they're asking about like um sorting errors perhaps or um missed deliveries built into the contract and of course this has been on hold for a year but Mandy and I once a month go down to the different warehouses after the sort is completed at night and we uh, audit, oh, I don't even know off of my Mandy might know how many bins that we do. And so based on the contract, there has to be a 99% accuracy rate before they start getting uh, penalized on the contract. Um, so we've been doing it now, minus last year, uh, two, two and a half years. And we've actually, um, it's been a good rate. When we do find certain errors in the pod it's it's usually in one pod and it's usually uh a new sorter and that's where a lot of the, the miss sorts happen and mandy can add to that if she'd like and i do keep track and, and record um the uh issues that come if it's a, a repeated issue i do have a recording and i know um that that issue is a continuum, and that's kind of the issues that we would discuss with Optima in our biweekly meetings. Note that this um, scenario has happened three or four times, and that we really need to look into it and resolve the issue. Um, a little different topic, but should libraries should still be putting slips on items? That's a question. Should libraries still be putting slips on items that are from Comcat? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this so, is the MLS slip yes. for Comcat materials. To label those. Um, and that's because the way Optima works is that um, it it reads what your where it's going in your network. So if you're sending an item outside of your network, it doesn't know that. Um, and that's why you need to put a slip on it. Right. Um, okay. When, all right, Sarah, why don't you ask the next question? Cause I need to catch up on audience questions first. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, so I'm flipping back to our prepared questions but we'll jump right back into yours as well in a minute. Um, so I, as, as many of you may know, um, one sec, I jumped ahead, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay, so just a reminder that March is delivery survey month. What does MLS do with the data that's collected from the delivery surveys that we conduct? Yes, March is delivery survey month, one of my favorite months. Um, <laughs> so what we do is we look at the information. Um, it helps with the budgeting and contract negotiating process. It tells us about delivery volume. It helps us with volume for routes and kind of understanding uh, where the load of the volume is and um, what route and what network. And so a lot of that information goes into our annual report. Mm -hmm. um, and the survey does go out twice a year in October and March. And as Sarah said, our uh, survey is open now. It's going to be open until April 19th. And I was taking a look at the data the other day and um, I see a lot, a lot more responses than I did in the October, which I'm sure is probably due to more libraries being back on delivery. Um, and the, uh, the, the data showing that volume is um, pretty much close to pre-COVID numbers, which mm -hmm. is nice to see. Mm -hmm. um, Amanda, should I continue or? Um, I have, Okay. yeah, I have a question. Maybe we'll just take turns so okay. that I can keep up with what's going on in the chat. Um, so when a claim is submitted, how long should it take to get a payment? Is there any way to know how the claim is progressing. Um, so can you give us more information about that, Mandy? Sure, so um, on the first of each month, I submit the claims to Optima for the previous month. So like tomorrow, April 1st, I'll be submitting the claims for March um, to Optima. And then they go through and look through all the claims. So it usually takes about two to three months um, for them to go through the process and then uh, send out reimbursement checks. But if you have any questions or it's been longer than two to three months and you haven't received a check, you can always email um, 
Optima or you can email myself and I'll help and try to um, find out the information on the status of your claim. So um, talking about sort of delivery, it is a really big um, undertaking that involves a lot of different moving pieces that are a con constantly different moving pieces. It also happens to be one of our most expensive services. Um, Betsy, can you talk a little bit about the annual costs associated with delivery? Yes, well, as many of you know from uh, our annual meeting reports right now, uh, ML, uh, delivery is running at about 58% of MLS's entire budget which is quite significant. Um, the annual base fee is uh, almost $4.4 .4 million. But in addition to that, I have to add in uh, the sorter, uh, the, yeah, the sorter, the drivers, their health insurance costs, the ACA, the EMAC, and one of the biggest costs is the minimum wage cost that went into effect um, three years ago. Uh, and so that's running right now about $464,000 a year on top of that. So it, it bring, all these costs bring uh, the contract total to a little over $5 million right now, uh, which is uh, quite significant. Um, right now, the current delivery stop, which increases every July 1st, right now for every stop that we do, uh, it's uh, $41.14 a stop. And can you tell us a little bit about uh, sort of the delineation between what MLS pays for, what our members pay for? Are there any, any other entities that contribute to the, to the cost of running the service? Well, right now, the cost for delivery itself is there is no charge to the members. This is um, all through our budget that we receive from the state. Uh, the only thing that we implemented a few years ago was the holds and returns fee for the uh, top 50 uh, libraries. Uh, 38 right now are taking advantage of it and that's running right now at $1,000 a year. And that, and that is again, will be billed on July 1st. Are there, that, sorry, I'm sorry, continue. But that's the only cost right now for members. Are there any future uh, plans for delivery that our members should be aware of? Well, right now, I mean, it all depends on our budget. Mm -hmm. And so it, we, we did do well this year in our budget, but you know, it, it, it can change from one year to the other. We, I had originally based it on if we did uh, got a 3% increase, it would, it would help us uh, keep delivery solvent. Um, so please keep advocating for us and because yes, we, uh, we, uh, we really need that uh, to keep the service at no cost for our members. Yeah, but and we're really, really grateful and thank you yeah, for, thank you. Um, for the advocacy efforts our members, our support organizations um, have shown over the past few years uh, in light of the service. We, we recognize and we know how critical this service is to uh, really resource sharing within your libraries, within your networks, and how valued it is among your users. Uh, and we're working uh, to do everything in our power to, to continue supporting the system and the service, as well as all of the services that MLS offers uh, as best we can. So again, thank you for that. Betsy, um, this, uh, yeah. is a, this is Amanda, sorry. Can you clarify uh, branch fees and, and why we charge branch fees and what those are? If a branch wants to have delivery, then it, it, that's not built in our contract and they, um, the, the main library chooses to pay for the branches. And that's based on uh, stop, per stop cost, I believe. Optima figures that out for, for the branches. And, um, and actually, so somebody's asking about, I think something that Sarah and I decided not to include in the Q&A, but um, they, can you give us an update on the project with Rhode Island um, and and what's going on with that? Well, well, yeah, I'm gonna let Mandy take that one. Okay. So right now, um, if you have anything to return, you can return your items to um, Rhode Island. Uh, we're 
we're in contact with um, Chai Chen to talk and see where they are um, and in regards to uh, delivery. And we'll kind of keep you informed and keep you posted. Um, right now it is fine to um, send items back. Sorry about that, I was muted. Uh, just a quick um, info kind of thing on the Rhode Island Libraries. Um, we entered into a partnership with the Office of Information and Library Services at the state of Rhode Island uh, with our delivery. They also use Optima, and this was a bridge sort of that we were able to connect Rhode Island Libraries, Massachusetts Libraries um, through uh, 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 just the delivery systems that were available, which allowed libraries um, as folks that live in Massachusetts to return their items to Massachusetts libraries and make sure that they still get back to Rhode Island. But um, keeping in mind that Rhode Island libraries are reopening, even though they're right next door, their reopening is very different than perhaps what our state is looking at. And even within our state, we know our libraries are, are opening and using delivery in, a, in very different ways um, as well. Okay. And then um, I think there, there's a lot of, there were a lot of questions. So I'm just still trying to catch up, but I do have one more that's sort of a comment, but I think maybe we can um, address it um, with an answer is that some of the uh, libraries that are in attendance today um, haven't been quarantining items once they pull them and put them out for delivery. So I'm wondering if um, Betsy or Mandy, you can, um, provide some insight on how we know that there are libraries that are quarantining and, and how we know that that is affecting delivery. I'll let Mandy do this, but yes. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of her name, Mandy. She just did a whole survey on how many libraries were quarantining for how long. Yes, um, a Comcat had done a survey on um, the quarantining of uh, materials and from the responses that's how uh, we learned uh, the, what um, library each library is doing for quarantining yeah eliana who conducted the survey is in our chat Hi, thank you eliana that was a really it was really it was fascinating i'm sure it was a lot of work and we really appreciate it Right, Sarah, why don't you go back to some of your questions? Keep muting. Um, forgive me, I muted myself. Um, Betsy, in the next 300 year or so, 365 days, what do you see as the biggest challenge um, our delivery system is going to face? Well, as I mentioned before, you know, obviously it always has to do with the budget every year. Um, luckily, the last couple of years have been good. We've been able to maintain delivery at, at its current levels. And one of the biggest uh, uh, challenges that Optum is facing is really hiring and keeping drivers. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's not a, a high paying job, although they, they try to pay them way more than minimum wage, but there's a lot of call out, there's a lot of turnover. So uh, that's one of the biggest challenges for, for, for Jim with and Optima. Yeah, and Optima, the staff is, is very good, but they're also um, you know, consistently doing training and um, right. um, making sure that things are working appropriately and folks that are on the tasks. Well, um, well, we, I want to mention, I mean, that we always get very good feedback on most of the drivers. Mm -hmm. The libraries love their drivers, and we're happy to hear that. Yeah, very good. Are there any, um, so from my list of questions, are there any final thoughts, anything we haven't covered, um, Nandy, that you'd like uh, our members to know about or be aware of? I think I pretty much covered everything. Um, if you have any questions regarding delivery or concerns, just please don't hesitate to reach out to us and um, you can contact me at delivery at masslibsystem.org. Um, Delivery guide is a very helpful resource for all information about delivery. Um, just here to help you in any possible way that we can. Yeah. All right. Um, so there definitely were a couple things in the chat that we did not get to and we are past 1130 now. So 
when I'm going to go through the chat at the end um, of today and uh, we will address any questions that didn't get covered um, in this um, so that you all have that information. Um, so just to wrap things up, I wanted to say thank you to all for attending um, today's MLS Live. And, um, you know, we wanted to say before we say goodbye, we always like to acknowledge the staff at MLS and the staff at your libraries and how grateful we are to them um, and to you for everything that we have accomplished this year, which has been a really challenging year for all of us. Um, and we um, also want to let you know that we'll be here again on April 27th. Um, in that session, um, we will be joined by Catherine Halperin from the Boston Public Library, who is going to discuss the Library for the Commonwealth. Um, so we will see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.